there's still very much an interest for young people to come to the United States um, to learn, to be educated in our higher education institutions. But of course, they're very expensive and there aren't a lot of full scholarships that would be available to um, a larger number of, of people in, uh, in African nations. But, you know, I would say that, um, you know, a lot of people are still very um, favorably impressed by the United States. There are still a number of young Africans uh, in particular who are emerging. There is a massive youth bulge uh, on the continent writ large. And you can see the in, the inventions that are coming up. I mean, it's not that they've never invented things. I mean, Africans have been inventing things since time immemorial. They just aren't recognized often for their inventions. Um, if you look at the way that coronavirus is being dealt with in certain countries, you look at um, at Senegal. They've done they've done a really tremendous job. Um, but they're not getting very much, um, you know, credit or um, they're not being singled out very much uh, because we tend to talk only about the negative parts of Africa. Um, we see uh, women's networks, um, agricultural networks that are thriving on the African continent and um, they want to be part of the internet revolution. They want to have all of these new technologies. Um, they are involved in tech and, and Silicon Valley, um, new ideas. So, you know, it's not necessarily that they want to come to the United States, but they do appreciate the values that we say we stand for. Um, readily acknowledging that we are not a perfect union, that we are constantly striving to become a more perfect union. And that is very clear in these current times as we deal with the multitude of pandemics um, in the United States, uh, including racism. But the ideals are there. And um, I think that they have always appreciated the ideals that um, we try to live by. African nations are not monolithic. They have different um, different views. They're polarized just as much as many other countries are. And uh, a lot of countries are also just focusing on their own needs and, and themselves and trying to do what's best for their own countries and their economies. So, um, but I think that there are still a number of countries in Africa that appreciate um, what the United States has done for them. And I think about South Sudan, um, the relationship is, is not smooth. It has not been um, great since uh, we started um, calling them out for corruption and um, human rights abuses and lots of other things that I certainly did during my time as ambassador and we've continued, but of course we continue to work with them. Um, and they recognize how much the United States did for their fight for self-determination um, to become ultimately have the choice to decide whether they wanted to secede from Sudan or remain united. And of course, they, they chose to secede. So there's still some goodwill about our past actions and um, a lot of ties and a lot of ties between the um, African communities and um, the diaspora here as well that are now U.S. citizens. So I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's a losing uh, prospect, but um, you know all relationships have to be nurtured, and um, they're like you know plants; they have to be watered and fed.